Dr. Schaefer, thanks for joining us again here on Health, Con Health Connection. Our topic is the diabetes link. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about that. First of all, for definition purposes, what is diabetes and why does there appear to be a link between it and so many other diseases? Well, diabetes is a condition in which blood sugar is too high. For the type of diabetes that we most commonly encounter, type 2 diabetes is caused by obesity, which causes our bodies to be resistant to insulin. Up to a point, our body is able to produce extra insulin to overcome that defect, but eventually blood sugar becomes elevated, and then we have the condition called diabetes, in which fasting blood sugars are over 126 or random sugars over 200. Now, people with diabetes frequently will have other conditions such as high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and often have positive family histories for conditions like heart attack and stroke. So a person with diabetes is at risk for heart attack, stroke, and a variety of other conditions, in part because these conditions are inherited together, and in part because high blood sugar and elevated insulin also seem to be implicated in those processes which clog up our arteries and are synergistic with the effects of high cholesterol and high blood pressure, as well as smoking. Are, the, are these links to other diseases impacted by both type 1 and type 2 diabetes? More so type 2 diabetes. Part of the link with type 2 diabetes is obesity. We know obesity is associated with uh, increased risk of, of cancer, heart disease, and dementia. And then when we drill down further, we find out that the subgroup of people with obesity that are also diabetic have an even higher, higher risk of and these conditions. And just for you know clinical purposes here, just so that we for you know, understanding purposes, what is type one and type two? Let's differentiate those. Well, type one diabetes is usually seen in kids, but not always, which is why we no longer call it juvenile. And it's a condition in which the body completely quits making insulin. People with type one diabetes are, are usually very thin, and they depend upon insulin for survival. They have to have insulin injections because their body does not make any insulin. Type 2 diabetes, on the other hand, and paradoxically enough, is a condition in which there is actually an excess amount of insulin in the body, but there's excess insulin to try to overcome what we call insulin resistance. Obesity and inactivity cause the body to have insulin resistance or an inability to use the insulin produced by the body. So the pancreas, the main insulin producing organ, has to produce two or three times as much insulin as normal in order to try to keep blood sugars within the normal range. So type 2 diabetes is the type associated with obesity and inactivity, and it accounts for 19 out of every 20 people with diabetes. To put numbers to that, there are about 22 million people in the United States with type 2 diabetes and about 1 million people with type 1, to give an idea of the relative frequency. Okay. What's the link between diabetes and heart attack and stroke? Well, people with diabetes have a two to four times elevated risk of both heart attack and stroke. A person with diabetes almost always has high levels of cholesterol. They almost always have high blood pressure, and frequently they'll have a positive family history. So the, the diabetic gene, a high blood sugar gene, seems to travel with these other risk factors for heart attack and stroke. We also know that insulin seems to cause uh, smooth muscle cells to proliferate or grow, which is another factor that helps clog up our arteries. Our arteries are lined by smooth muscle, and if those cells become too, uh, too uh, prolific, then they can clog up the vessel just al along with uh, cholesterol. Why do people with diabetes, and I did not know this, why do people with diabetes have a greater risk of hearing loss? Well, there, there are many causes of hearing loss, but one of the more common ones is a decrease in the circulation to the, uh, to the ear. There's two aspects of this. The, the arteries that go to the ear and then go to the brain to uh, uh, supply nutrition to these cells get clogged up, just like the arteries that go to the, the heart. Mm -hmm. So if you have a heart attack due to a decreased blood supply to the heart, well, if you have decreased blood supply to the, to the inner ear mechanism, then that will cause decreased hearing. These tiny little hair cells in, in the cochlea 
they are very, very sensitive to not having enough uh, blood, adequate blood supply. And blood glucose itself seems to be toxic to these cells as well. So people with diabetes will have a 20 or 30 percent higher risk of developing hearing loss, and they will develop it at an earlier age, depending on when their diabetes developed. You touched on this earlier, but let's give it a little bit of color. What's the connection between diabetes and cancer? Well, this is, this is really fascinating. We, we have learned through epidemiological studies that people with obesity, and more specifically those that, that have diabetes, have increased risk of the more common cancers, breast cancer, uh, colon cancer, and prostate cancer. On the surface, I mean, why in the world should diabetes have anything to do with cancer? Well, it turns out that cancer cells have insulin receptors. When these cancer cells are flooded with insulin, they grow faster. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you want to grow breast cancer cells in a test tube, one of the things you have to supply them is insulin and lots of blood sugar. If you cut off the blood sugar supply or the insulin supply, you can't grow these cells. So uh, an environment in which there are high levels of insulin seems to favor the development of cancer cells. We don't know if it's so much it initiates the cancer or once the cancer starts, high levels of insulin tend to stimulate the growth of the tumors. It's a very active area of research since obesity and diabetes are becoming so much more common. The concern is that these, these cancers, which are already the most common cancers we have, prostate, breast, colon, will become even more common in the future. Risk increases of 20 to 30 or even 40 percent. We keep talking here about the diabetes link, the links to diseases. Another disease that is becoming more and more common, the cognitive diseases, Alzheimer's and dementia. What is the diabetes link? This is uh, another disease where on the, on the surface there does not seem to be any reason why diabetes should be uh, associated with, uh, with dementia. It turns out that uh, there are two types of dementia, primary types, there's vascular dementia, in which it makes sense that anything that interrupts the blood supply of the brain would increase the risk for vascular dementia. Vascular dementia is, dementia is uh, results from multiple small strokes affecting the brain that eventually affect our ability to, to uh, think, leading to dementia. Now, Alzheimer's disease is not related so much to circulation, but it is greatly increased in people with diabetes. They think that high blood sugar or insulin, and this is speculative, we don't we don't really know what is causing this, uh, uh, why diabetes would cause an increased risk of Alzheimer's. Recent studies have shown there is this, there is this connection. The speculation at this point, which is being tested, is that we think that, that insulin may promote the growth of what we call amyloid protein, which pr promotes these uh, neurofibrillatory uh, tangles. So it literally tangles up the, the nerve cells and prevents the normal propagation of nerve impulses in the brain. So insulin and, and perhaps blood sugar itself may be the bad actors here, but it's important to try to dissect out what, what is the role of blood sugar and what is the role of insulin. If it's merely a matter of excess blood sugar, then controlling diabetes Controlling blood sugar may help reduce the risk, but if insulin itself is a factor, then we, have, we may have to rethink how we treat some of these diseases and focus on lowering insulin resistance so that we don't have to use as much insulin. But for most, for most individuals, the primary goal is to get the sugar under control, which is going to provide uh, the, the essential benefits of, of preventing vascular dementia. Another link, hypertension, high blood pressure. What is the diabetes link? Well, well diabetes and high blood pressure seem to be inherited together, uh, along with obesity and, and high cholesterol. Uh, diabetes is also a, an inflammatory state. High blood sugar causes uh, something called oxidative stress, where the body, body literally rusts from the inside out, just like a, a nail rusts when it's exposed to, to, to water, air, and oxygen. 
the inside of our, of our blood vessels are subjected to that same kind of oxidative stress which is promoted by excessive insulin and excessive blood sugar and that can cause the blood vessels to uh, become constricted and interfere with the flow of blood. Now again, this is an area of very active research. We do not have firm um, evidence to tell us cause and effect. Very important area of study since so many people are affected with obesity, diabetes, and hypertension. These risks, these links, are they factors are they possible regardless of how well one manages one's diabetes? Well this is really a very very key question. Uh, we think since we see an increased risk of, of dementia, Alzheimer's, and cancer in people with prediabetes or pe which is a condition in which blood sugar is elevated but not enough to be called diabetes or we even see it in people with normal glucose tolerance but that just they have obesity and elevated insulin. It may be the elevated insulin levels which are the, the bad actor here, in which case controlling blood sugar alone may not be sufficient. We may have to actually figure out ways to lower insulin resistance and lower insulin levels so that an individual will not only have normal blood sugar, but will be able to have normal blood sugar with normal insulin levels. Doctor, very well. I've learned a lot. Thank you very much for your You're time. You're very welcome.